So hello DevCrowd, uh, one year later and uh, what I planned for today is to show you a little bit more code. So um, as you remember the last time there was uh, lots of esoteric discussion about components, boundaries and whatever. The only problem I have is this. Um, so I broke my bones in my underarm so um, I cannot type very fast but I think because we have Java E, it should work anyway. So um, uh, if you have to type a lot in Java E projects, um, you are not going to be successful anyway. So um, I will probably be a little bit slower than usual. So uh, your job is to ask questions. And um, what I uh, prepared for today is, um, so we, uh, we have here a Twitter. So you can uh, use this um, hashtag devcrowd, devcrowdpl. And I also activated the chat here uh, from, from Ustream. So you can use whatever you like. And I think there's a little bit of lag, like five seconds. So um, ask questions, um, as, as many questions only possible. It'll be easier to me so I don't have to type a lot. And um, so now I think we set up everything. So um, I would like to just start with um, the introduction. So I, I thought a little bit about Java 7 and particularly in uh, with um, Java 8. So um, I think the Java 8 is uh, will have the um, the highest impact on the architecture of uh, of applications. And this is what I would like to show you a little bit today. So hopefully it's more interesting than than the last time. So who am I? I'm just a developer. I started in 1995. Since 1997, I'm a freelancer. I never worked for a company, so I always was a freelancer, consultant, programmer, or whatever. Sometimes I wrote books or articles, but usually I spend lots of time of uh, coding and hacking. And um, because I get lots of requests about, um, about workshops, I uh, try to uh, optimize my time and organize um, a few times a year workshop at Munich Airport, so it's workshops at bean.com. And usually they are uh, actually a few developers from, from Poland. Um, uh, they were from Gdańsk, Posen. I don't know whether from Szczecin, but uh, from, from all over the place. So you are welcome. Yes, and um, some resources. I write a blog. Uh, this is my uh, the, um, the 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 workshops and Ehex news is like meta news. I write once a month a newsletter and uh, about uh, meta stuff like my talks or some news, but not I would say more pointers to resources or events, not technical news. Um, so yeah, this book is still current. So um, I probably will write a second edition in one point of time, but not now, no time. And this is also um, seems to be popular. Um, yeah, and uh, we can stay in touch with Airhex TV. This is uh, probably also the, the most imp uh, interesting thing for you. Because uh, one, one time a month, this is the first Monday of the month at 6 p.m., I'm just answering questions live. So you can ask me questions using Eric or Twitter, very similar to now. It's the same setup. And I try to answer all the questions. And uh, the deal is I don't answer uh, email questions anymore or Twitter questions. I try to gather them and answer them once a month. So huge time saver. This is the workshops. Slides don't break. <laughs> Why this? Bones break, but not slides. So this is the last slide. And um, now I would like to switch to NetBeans and attempt to code a little bit for you. Hopefully you would work. Uh, it is a lot better. It was uh, than uh, even yesterday. So um, let's find the IDE here. And I will just check whether you have any, any questions. So no questions so far. Um, okay, I see myself. This is a quite of recursive, uh, recursive um, experience. So I could even uh, retweet this, and uh, until Twitter and Ustream and everything <laughs> breaks. Okay, so now, as always, I would like to create a Java E project. And what I usually usually do is uh, I use Maven. Most uh, commonly asked questions: Why I not use uh, Gradle? And my answer is uh, for um, Java 7 project. It doesn't matter. Um, Maven is twice as fast as Gradle, twice as fast as Gradle, and um, and I don't need the power of Gradle in my Java E projects. But if the projects are more uh, evolved and more complicated, I would prefer uh, Gradle over Maven. So to, 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 uh, to, to, to say it clearly, um, 
Maven with convention over configuration is perfect setup for Java and Gradle is better if you don't cannot live with the conventions anymore and you have to implement your own stuff. So and I, I thought um, about which application to implement today and I thought about today re to do's and reminders but I wrote recently a small to, to reminders app so I thought it would be better today about weather service or broken <laughs> broken bones or something like this. Um, so let's say I would create an application called weather and this is going to be a Maven application. So it will take a second and will pull everything down. So what I'm using here, I'm using uh, NetBeans daily build. So if you will see some exceptions or pop-ups, this is just usual if you're using with the daily builds. Why I'm using daily builds? Because it comes with better JavaScript support and HTML5 supports and um, JavaScript and HTML5 support I use a lot right now in my projects. Today I would like to use Whitefly. Uh, I think last year I used Glassfish or nothing. I cannot remember whether I hacked something or not. So I would just use uh, Whitefly. And what happened right now? I just created a very simple Java 7 applications. This is the whole Maven. So I'm using Java 8 and one API dependency, Java E API 7.0. So this is the deal here. I think pretty clear. So I, I, I show it several hundred times already. So I always use this archety uh, archetype. And um, so now I think we could start with uh, JaxRS and then if you like, I can create some Java server pages, uh, Java server pages, Java server faces um, application and um, um, or, or view. And I would like to uh, introduce to configure JaxRS first, JaxRS config. This is a configuration is um, the class I usually name it and AirHex is just my personal stuff. So JaxRS AirHex and let's say the application name is weather. Weather, finish and I get a simple class. I need um, an uh, annotation application path. The content of the application path doesn't matter, but what it defines is, is the uh, URI and this extends application. So it looks like this. So what we gained now, uh, JaxOS is set up. What is JaxOS is like a REST endpoint in Java EE. So um, then I would like to create, um, um, let's, I just thinking about whether we should be very clean in architecture or just show you the, the code, but um, let's create a class and in the package whether uh, dot, let's say whether is the um, application name, then I would use a business as a layer and then we'll introduce um, the uh, component name and uh, forecast is the right name. And then I would use the boundary and uh, weather, weather forecast, something like this and um, forecast resource. And this could be forecasts in case we have multiple forecasts. So just um, a simple class. And now I can use a path and say forecasts done. I just will look briefly whether you have any questions here. Yeah, no question. Oh, uh, someone says it's always someone who uses NetBeans and this is, um, yeah, probably because all others are watching, right? Uh, Bartek. So um, I'm only who using NetBeans ID because all others are watching and they just shut down NetBeans. So, um, so forecasts, weather forecast resource and just create the very first um, stuff with uh, Java EE7 object. Oh, not object, actually array, JSON. The slow typing, I hate, hate this actually, but what we can do, right? So my advice to you is no sports. You know, um, if you do some sports, you break your bones and then you, your productivity will suffer. So no sports, just hacking and everything is okay. So get, and I would could say um, return, JSON, create array builder, add, of course, clouds is always uh, interesting because uh, clouds without clouds, there is nothing, right? And a little bit of sun of course, and build. 
So, and um, just a quick test. So I will just run the application and try to deploy it. So as I said, today we'll use Whitefly. We could use Payara or Glassfish or, or Tommy for the Java E6 stuff. It should just work. So I just um, opened the, um, this is forbidden because nothing there, resources. I think forecasts were always tough and this is actually good news. What it actually means, the browser requests text HTML and we don't have it. So uh, we would like to use uh, JSON and what I will use, I will use in terminal instead of this, I will just use the same URI. Wait a second, I have to paste it, paste. And as you can see, clothes and sun, it works. So um, probably interesting. There is no, you know, hidden generated code or whatever. Uh, you can go here and uh, and I can show you the target weather the war, and this is basically uh, just two classes, which is um, important to me because you know small wars means fast deployments, and uh, see whether we have any questions. So no no questions in the chat. Uh, everyone seems to be happy. Okay, so now um, this is not very realistic because uh, what you usually will do, you will separate the um, rest part and the application part. Um, if you put too much stuff there, uh, um, uh, it is really hard to test. So um, what I would do, I would just create the uh, weather or let's say forecast forecaster weather forecaster this is actually a nice name why i always write c weather forecaster and this is going to be an egb why because i don't like to uh, care about um, transactions and usually egbs pulled egb stateless introduce better performance at least at whitefly so um oh, wrong button save it and i could just return something uh, and let's say it doesn't matter whether it is array or not i just would like to show you know to put all the parts together return storms so now we have it and then we can inject this here using it inject weather forecaster WF <laughs> also nice and we can say WF dot all and and let's keep sun it doesn't matter as you can see storms and uh, sun this is actually quite realistic uh, Java application um, just two classes and we could inject to the weather forecast entity manager or whatever you like so um so what you learned a little bit um java java e7 because this json array and the json api is part of java e7 so um see whether you have any questions sun clouds weather oracle <laughs> yeah of course um uh, i was uh in, at a conference in in uh, new york it was community east east it was a part of java one and at this conference was a nice uh, a nice ad it was a huge ad and their content was behind every cloud there is a sun of course microsystems back then right so this was <laughs> uh, nice times so thank you oh man what so have to be careful with uh, you know with my underarm so this is actually um a very simple thing and now let's go a little bit crazy so what you can do with java e so we could say this is void and void get is crazy right so but what 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 we can do in java e7 we can say we would like to get a suspended async response we response and uh, what we can do, we can rewrite it a bit. So instead of doing this, I can just get here the uh, result and do something like this. So 
So this is new in Java 7. And what it actually means is um, we are passing to the asynchronous response uh, this uh, the result. But yeah, but uh, what we actually gain here, so in this particular case, we gain nothing, right? It, it looks a little bit uh, more complicated and doesn't make any sense, but in a second it will. So what actually happens, the method will immediately um, uh, uh, um, complete and uh, but we can we can we can uh, have an handle to their response and asynchronously what we what means here asynchronously it means without blocking a server thread push the uh, the uh, the message back to the um, back to the uh, to the browser and um, this is um, let's see whether it actually works so I just save that it is getting redeployed as you can see is actually no difference it should work as before a little bit strange so let's see whether you have any questions no questions no question in chat and uh, no questions in all the hashtags okay so what we could also do we could say here we just have a method json object um, and this is for JSON array, sorry, JSON array forecast, and I will just move this here and just say result return. So, as you can see, it would work right the same. So, if I put the forecast here, it would work now. Um, if you, if you think about this, this creates a JSON array and this accepts an object. So actually, we could say um, consumer of object and consumer is a functional interface in Java 8. Um, let's say, yeah, why not? Consumer equals response Oh, this is the exception I told you, um, the, the window I told you. Uh, resume. So what I actually did is I created a method handle, resume from response consumes objects. And of course what forecast does, it produces objects. So on the other hand, I could say this forecast um, I think it is a supplier, yes, of object. I always confuse it with producer in Java, but this time it worked, supplier. So, and this is just a Java 8 functional interface. You can see functional interface, except this functional interface doesn't matter. It just, um, uh, if you, if you uh, annotate an interface with um, functional interface and you have multiple abstract methods, you get a compiler error. This is very similar to override. So, um, now, what we can what we, uh, get with Java, Java 8 is something called completable future. And now I can say supply async supplier, then accept consumer done let's see whether it actually works still works you, you saw i was just too fast it was not uh, deployed yet but it works with the new contents let's say uh, moon oh i didn't recognize the change yes uh, storms moon for unknown reasons, my uh, um, oh, it is uh, slow because of the streaming stuff. This is actually the reason. So what we created now, um, we combined the consumer with the supplier, and this could be any class from the uh, any backend class, and uh, we we uh, we put them together using completely the future, which comes with Java eight. The only problem is, let's see whether you, oh, yeah, I'm just too fast a little bit. So everything crystal clear, right? No questions. No questions. Okay. 
So the only problem is, if you look at the method, it is executed in fork joint pool. So this pipeline is asynchronous, but executed in a fork joint pool of the application no, of the of Java SE, so we can start you know too many threads at a time, and too many threads can can lead to out of memory errors because each each thread allocates a certain amount of memory, and this is um, not very uh, interest and uh, not not very robust thing to do. So instead of this, uh, we I introduce you another feature. It's called here. Uh, you can inject it with resource and managed executor service. It is part of the uh, concurrency utilities of um, of Java of uh, Java E7, and this is like executor service from from JDK one uh, six. In, in fact, there is a just executor service from JDK one six. So if you look at the um, imports. Uh, is there something? Yeah, Java Util Concurrent Executor Service. So this is actually ordinary executor service, and because it is ordinary executor service, I can pass it to the method um, supply async. So what happens right now is uh, the pipeline is async is executed asynchronously, but with threads of the application server. So if this will block for an unknown amount of time. Um, it will be uh, um, fully asynchronously imp um, uh, um, uh, um, managed by this uh, by uh, the pipeline, and this uh, amount of threads and 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 and, and queue depth and so forth can be uh, configured uh, at the application server level. So this is standardized. So all the application servers can have uh, have a configuration facility for this pipeline. So now we are pretty far. So I'm just looking whether we get any questions. So everything crystal clear, Dev Crowd. So you should at least say yes. It's too trivial. Go faster. No, faster will be hard or slower or whatever. So, uh, Dev Crowd, any questions? Everything crystal clear. So I will save time and will not uh, wait for your your answers. Instead, I will show you another trick what you can get with um, Java seven. So what I could do, for instance, logging. So I can very easily create a logging package. Uh, forecast, let's say, not forecasts, but why not logging boundary, just to give you some ideas what you can do, and log a producer, and the log a producer is going to produce a um, consumer of strings, because a logger is a consumer of strings. So, and I can use here the producers annotation, but this one. And um, what also interesting, uh, expose, I would like to use, uh, or I have to introduce um, Bins XML because I, um, in default in Java 7, the dependency injection only works in annotated classes. And um, so I would like to change the default to all, and now the dependency dependency injection should work everywhere. So this is actually the uh, idea. So and this is not annotated, so I would like um, to activate it everywhere. And uh, what I like to do is to have the injection point. By the way, this example comes from the spec actually. Um, so um, in this from the CDI spec in, the, in Java six. So um, it's actually just borrowed from the spec um, get a member get declaring class and get name so now we have the name of the class class name and what we can do right now we can configure the logger with that return logger and say get logger with the class name and now we can expose for instance yeah this is um, what does not work here info and we expose the method info as a consumer of strings so having said that so we just save everything I could go to the um, weather forecaster and inject 
consumer of strings. And um, I will call this um, lock and say lock dot accept seems to work. So, um, oh, it still works. This is a uh, remarkable view server lock. But there is, it could be that info is not exposed, so let's say. Just to go sure, I will just recompile everything and rebuild. So this is a clean deploy in Maven, uh, sorry, clean, um, Maven clean install. And now I will redeploy the application again. Looks good. But this was the log actually, it seems to work. I think it even I just was confused by the formatted output. You see, Comia has weather business forecast boundary weather forecaster. This is the threat. Managed executor threat. This is also interesting. So it means this was executed in our threat pool and the um, the output is seems to work. Okay, I'm sure you have to have questions. So far so good? Everything clear? So actually I'm breaking up a bit from time to time. Sorry for this, um, but what will happen? I will just, uh, after the show, I will uh, uh, republish this on YouTube. So um, um, Bartek asked me, completable future gave us comparing to just async response. Um, so the main difference is just with async response, there is actually no threading. Um, so this resume will just push directly to the browser. With completable future, this is executed in, uh, in a dedicated thread. The question is why I would like to do this. And the answer is because with um, managed executor service, I can say I would like for this service to dedicate no more than eight threads. And then if um, and the impact is going to, um, or what you gain with this is, you can increase the robustness because it will be harder to uh, hack the server. Because um, uh, if you only have you know, five threads, um, the server is going to be overloaded. And on that note, probably to show you this um, a little bit better, what you can do is, um, I will just use my own library I use in some project, it's called Porcupine. Um, yeah, I will show you in a second. Dependency, Porcupine. So this is Maven Central, so you can use exactly the same dependency. Yes, this is group ID, is my group ID, 004. And then I should be able to say at inject at dedicated and not managed executor service just plain executor service so what this porcupine library does you can look at that, uh, my github account and on, on um, let me just show you github my GitHub account and Porcupine. So I uh, implemented some examples and Porcupine. And this is the uh, library with some examples. So you can look at this after it also recorded already some, some, some videos. So um, what happens with this? So I can injecting my, uh, I will inject my executor service here and we'll just run it again. And the terminal is storms and moon. But what I can should be able to do is wait a second. Say minus each h. Oh, minus i. So spy. I will have to redeploy it. So clean build. So what this Porcupine does 
it is a configurable thread pool and the spy what it does it produces additional HTTP um, output so um, and debug output and I wanted to present to you to this to make it more clear Still the same output. Oh, it worked, but it was hidden. So as you can see, uh, what we get additional HTTP header, Porcupine Statistics MES. You see pipeline name MES. It is comes from from this. This is the um, the field name here. Rejection execution handler name. So what it means in the case of uh, rejection, this class is going to be uh, notified. Uh, is only one thread active, one task completed. There were no uh, no exceptions. Core pool size is eight. Um, current thread pool size is two, and there was the two is the largest. Maximum pool, pool size was sixteen. There was no rejected tasks, so it means the server was never um, overloaded, and the remaining uh, queue capacity is one hundred. So what it means in the case of overload, the queue um, the queue get uh, uh, less and less capacity until the rejection execu executor handler kicks in and uh, yeah min queue capacity was 100 so it means in, 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 in no case the server was overloaded so um, this is what we do in more serious projects because uh, if you don't have this it is very easy to overload a server so you will have to you know or at least one service you only have a global thread pool and you will have to configure the thread pool as high as the um, as the uh, as the demand of a service with this you can create very easily a thread pool per service just using a different name here and all the thread pool is going to configure it on the fly so i hope you are not lost no questions so now is ex everything extremely clear i think yes So now um, I show you a little bit my own library called Porcupine, and this is also based on um, Java 7 concurrency utilities. So this library also uses managed thread from the application server. So what's ugly here, of course, the producer creates consumer of strings. This is a built-in Java 8 interface, and uh, we use this, and you have to say accept. So what would be very possible, you could create your own um, uh, yeah, we have too many locks. Lock interface. And uh, say this is a functional interface and this has to be an interface, of course. And then say uh, lock string. And as you can see, we get an error interface abstract methods cannot have body so um, now we have a uh, functional interface string message so and uh, this could of course um, expose the log interface and the weather forecaster could have just the log interface with lock this would be exactly the same so this could um, it's exactly the same code so even sees you get if you click here I get routed here to the producers so this is the pair okay I get two questions I guess Oh, someone said me uh, use HTTP.org, uh, a nice curl alternative. I actually like curl, but I will try this. And never heard about HTTPI. Never heard about this, but we'll look at this. So thank you. And uh, Bartek is happy. Very good. Any other questions? Um, if you have any other questions, like I don't know, uh, Java related, feel free to ask. This is our time. We can do whatever you like. I'm really glad about every question, so I don't have to type a lot. So. Um, what we um, also get for free, of course, um, is uh, oh, then the the, the other uh, 
most asked question is about configuration. I will just quickly hack it because it's very similar to to Java uh, to uh, logging. So I'll just configurator. Um, it's actually configurator boundary, and the class name is configurator. finish and what I can do very easily I can just emit a configuration string configure and this can be a stage up uh, depending depending on server ping environment depending uh, whatever like the same idea injection point and what I usually do So I can say IP dot get get member get declaring class get uh, name. So this is the fully qualified class name, as we had at the logger class. And on the same note, we can say IP dot get get member get name. This is the field name, and having both, we have unique identifier of the field field name and we just return so i did it multiple times but this is one of the most popular questions i'll show you again how to configure java applications and yeah with three lines of code class dot just we'll use an arrow instead of dot dot name and imagine this is going to be fetched from a database so i just will skip this but um this could be this could come or should come from database this doesn't make sense of course but um watch this what I can do right now, I can now say uh, in the weather forecaster at inject string, uh, let's say uh, password and seems to work storms plus password. So now I think I have to um, clean everything. So if you do too much, you have to clean and install the whole app. If the war is small, still no problem. Looks better. Storms, as you can see, com, air hacks, weather, business forecast, boundary, weather forecast, and password. Fully qualified name. It could be lookup from property file or whatever. And if you really have to configure Java applications, now you have you know the three lines of code with the configuration. Okay, I will just look whether you have questions. I suppose no questions. No questions, no questions. And here's something. Ha! Which is better? <laughs> Maven or Gradle? Victor uh, Sitako asked uh, ask me this. And um, at the beginning, I said uh, actually it does not matter. And um, actually, for this is let's I think projects uh, I even had an example for the workshops in Munich, so I created a project with both. And I think uh, Java. E I'm just forgot where it actually is. Examples. Here, yeah, Maven versus Gradle. Maven versus Gradle. So this project has both Gradle and Maven. So I will open both. So as you can see, uh, this is the uh, very simple um, Gradle script. Um, so it, it's, it's provided compile uh, Java X Java 7.0.1.8.1.8 archive name war name. So it is a little bit more, uh, it's a little bit beautified because there's Maven versus Gradle. So I just have a, a variable name here, which is used here. 
and the pom file would be this so it's actually no difference and what i have to say in my java projects the mav the uh, pom is never more complex than this what i get a lot probably a lot depends on the projects some uh testing dependencies not runtime dependencies but more test dependencies so um it would be basically no difference in my case so now um let's try to build it with uh gradle uh gradle so it is built in two seconds maven clean install it is built in zero dot in 700 milliseconds so um i mean we can do it again gradle maven so now you have both in my eyes it doesn't matter and because it doesn't matter i use a maven because there are more books and more resources of uh, more resources about uh, maven but if the project is not a java project then i would rather su suggest gradle because there are not uh, so many conventions as we have in java so um it's probably easier to use um gradle over you know forcing uh forcing maven to do uh wh what you would like to have so now we have live example maven versus gradle so um let's see any other questions how to increase container managed transactions timeout in glassfish payara default is two minutes i think five minutes uh i would say um what you can do you can inject user transaction and set transaction timeout and the transactions as i remember could be set globally uh in container there is a transaction service i cannot launch it right now because i'm using whitefly so this is uh, uh but thank you for the question So, could you please show us how to send a location HTTP header to the client with suspended rest, rest calls? It's a good one. Um, so, what uh, the problem is, uh, we are using here the consumer. Sorry, the supplier just supplies a JSON array. But uh, what um, I will do right now is to do the following. Um, I would just say public response uh with location header just and then we can say return return response created and i will need uh, an uri here new uri see whether this works so um i could uh so uh, i could use but forget uh, uh um location header really does not make any sense but i will just create it for you info get oh get absolute path builder dot path store me id dot build and what i get back is the uri info is the uri say uri dot dot uh, build and here as entity i can pass the forecast and as with a little bit of luck this should work um, terminal right box Probably this is null. This could be a bug from Jabos. So now run it. 
but this will be the way so you just putting the, uh, what i know you can just send response or even exception back so the uh, resume has two flavors object this could be a response you can put you know your headers entities whatever and exception so throwable is also accepted so this and um, and and so i will just checked with the problem with the pass builder this could be the problem uh, Uri. i never tried this with and the string is going to be hey joe something like this so and what we get location hey joe so the problem was the null http uh, requests what you could do you can uh, put the context here and then we could wrap this of course with our uh, own supplier so we just skip this because of typing but as you obviously see it works now we have location header hey joe uh, and I think this was exactly the question. I think Sebastian should be very lucky. Um, so... <laughs> there is no cloud. No, there is no cloud, there is just sun. Okay, I think... We cover our questions, right? So how much time do we have? I think we are done, is it true? DevCloud, how much time do I have? I would like, if you have no time, I would just wait for questions and then answer all your questions. Okay, someone asked me, um, ASP.NET MVC versus Java GSF. Um, I think um, a more fair example would be ASP.NET MVC versus um, Java E8 MVC. They, they, they would be more similar. GSF is a component framework and ASP.NET MVC is um, exactly not a component framework. But um, this ASP.NET MVC is really nice and has nothing to do with the old with the old uh, ASP from Microsoft. And if you are interested in this, just look at um, Java E8 MVC spec. Any other questions? If no questions, what do you like to see? So if no questions, I, I will probably hack hacked, uh, just a very simple GSF page, but uh, I don't know whether you are actually interested in this. But um, what you probably saw is uh, with uh, Java 8, it changes, you know, the way how you can structure Java, uh, Java 7 applications. And what I didn't show you, it could be even more interesting in case you uh, you would have JPA, for instance, because you get a collection, you know, of objects with a stream, so you could uh, you can create your own queries um, using filters and map them in real time, and even execute everything asynchronously, which is really really interesting. Um, so uh, DevCrowd says um, we are done. So thank you DevCrowd and thank you for your patience with my uh, no, uh, 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 slow typing and hopefully see you next year. And if not, um, uh, tune in to the um, to um, Airhex, um, let's see, um, to the um, uh, Airhex TV. So if you have any questions, just tune in. I think it's the May the 6th or 7th. And um, if you really like, just visit me in Munich. So just to show you the next workshops, I don't know know them out of the cuff. So we have the um, the regular series in July. So there's a quite a lot of attendees already. And there is one around the corner, corner about HTML5 for Java developers. And uh, yeah, there's lots of um, dedicated uh, workshops. And I'm thinking about deliver one about JavaScript, but I'm not sure yet. So. Um, Thank you for watching and um, see you next time and enjoy Java E. Thank you and bye.